Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could live a life with absolutely no stress? Well, actually, that might not be as wonderful as it might first sound. Because you see, stress is what helps us understand how to respond to certain things. So for example, we have a threat stress. And of course, we have inherited this from our pre prehistoric ancestors because they, of course, had very, very real threats, even though we don't have those same kind of threats in our life exactly. But they did. And so the ones who got away from the lions, they were the ones who actually procreated all those millennial years until we ended up, that's us. We still have that threat stress within us. And we want that because we still in our own lives have times when we need to, to run, perhaps to fight, but maybe just to turn the car wheel quickly. So that, that keeps us safe. That, that amount of stress we don't want to get rid of because when there's a real threat, that's what can keep us safe. A lot of changes go on in the body, blood rushes to the muscles, the digestion calms down, we don't need to be digesting if we have a real threat going on. So then there's another kind of stress that's really helpful, and that is called challenge stress. So think about you are maybe 10 years old, and you've just been taking piano for maybe a year. And now it's the end of the year, and you are informed that there's going to be a recital. And all of a sudden you realize, I'm going to be playing my piece in front of my mom and my dad and maybe my grandparents and other kids, and I've got to climb up these little steps and be on a stage, and there's a different piano. That's called challenge stress. We also want that in our life because what happens to that little 10 or 11-year-old? They practice more. They maybe ask the teacher what to expect, and they practice even more. And that way they achieve their goal, which is to do a good job. So challenge stress is something we also really want to have in our life because it allows us to accomplish the things that we really want to accomplish in our life. It, it's important to us. So challenge stress helps us achieve our goals. Now the stress problem is with uncertainty. And uncertainty stress is frankly what life is like right now. It, we are uncertain about just about name anything, and it's a level of uncertainty. What's gonna to happen to the climate, the, the debt ceiling, the, everything that's going on, the economy, um, what, what's going to, are my kids gonna get into college? All those kinds of things, all this uncertainty. And this uncertainty when it's really running our life, when there's a lot of it, a lot of uncertainty, stress in our life, it's very hard on the body. And that's not a good thing, especially if you happen to have a diagnosis. And by the way, having a diagnosis hands you a platter of uncertainty. You know, which doctor? Should I do this, uh, this method or should I do these drugs? Or should I not do any drugs at all? There's all this uncertainty that, that comes into play. And there's other situations as well that are uncertain, like if you're a caregiver or if you're caring for an aging parent, what's going to happen? It's totally uncertain. And it's also out of our control. So spiritual teachers have a lot to say about thinking. And so did Alyssa Eppel, who is a professor of uh, psychology at the University of California at San Francisco. And she's uh, been studying stress for over 30 years. She wrote a book called The Stress Prescription, and I have been devouring it, and I recommend it if you're interested. She says that it's not what happens to us that causes this kind of threat, this kind of stress, this ongoing stress, this uncertainty stress. It's our thinking is our thinking about what happened before that we couldn't figure out and then it happened and it was a problem or what is gonna happen or trying to create in our minds what should happen. 
that kind of thinking really keeps us in that state of uncertainty. So Buddha had something to say about thinking, and here it is. The mind is everything. What you think, you become. So what you've been thinking about lately, is that what you're becoming? Is that what you want to become? It, it, it's a good place to stop and, and notice. And of course, in Science of Mind, which is the uh, spiritual teaching here at Mile High Church, Ernest Holmes talks about thinking all the time. It's, a, it's, one of, it's one of the major through lines of this spiritual teaching. And one of his lines that I like especially is, all thought is creative. That's all thought. Not just the happy ones, not just the good ones, but all thought. So where are we spending our thought? Where is the time that we're spending it? So what to do? What does uh, this professor of psychology recommend who has been studying stress for so long and studying people under stress? She says, first of all, accept that life is uncertain and really look at what do I have control over and what is totally out of my control. And those things that are totally out of your control are the things that you want to try to keep yourself from worrying about and thinking about. That's the thinking you want to try to discard. Focus on those things you have control over. And, and that is also a way that you can diminish the amount of stress that you have. So if thinking is the major cause of stress, how do we change our thinking? First of all, accepting that it's uncertain, just as I said. Then she also suggests a, a little phrase that I think is fun because it's easy to remember. It's called catch and release, sort of like fishing. Those fishermen who catch, catch a wonderful something and then they let it go. They release it. So the hard part, of course, is catching ourselves. We have to be very aware when we are going on and on and on, worrying, thinking about some stressful event or something that's coming up and that's very stressful. Now, I want to be sure to make clear that I'm not, I don't have anything against planning. In fact, planning is very important. Planning is not the same as ruminating over what might happen or criticizing yourself about what did happen or something you said that you shouldn't have that made things worse. That's the part you want to catch. Catch yourself. And when you're feeling that and you're feeling like your mind is going on and on, just stop for a moment. Catch yourself. And then release. So what's the best way to release? The first method of defense is your breath. Your breath is with you always. The breath is a very interesting element of our, of our body and of the way we operate as, as humans and, and as living things. The breath is, is something we actually have some control over. We don't really have a lot of control over starting or stopping our digestion, but we can stop breathing. We can hold our breath. We can take great big long breaths. We can take short breaths. We can forget about it and the body will breathe for us. There's also a lot of interesting situations in many cultures where the word for breath also has spiritual connotations or perhaps is the same as the word for spirit or God or divine or the ultimate. In fact, in Latin, the word for, for breath is spiritus. And, of course, that's where we got our word spirit. And I believe that breath is actually one of those connections to spirit. If you think about it like that, it becomes almost holy. Because when we breathe, we are breathing into the universe, into the ultimate, uh, the ultimate energy of all there is. And we always say in Science of Mind, um, God is within me, around me, and through me. Spirit is in me, around me, through me. The energy of the universe 
is in me, around me, and through me. And one of the ways I think we, we interact with that is through the breath. So let's take a breath right now. This will be just an inhale and an exhale, so do it with me. And now a nice long exhale. If you were feeling any stress just before that, it's probably gone down a notch or two. Now there are many breath uh, exercises and they're all, they're all worthy. And if you have one that you love, I would just say use it more often. One that I really like a lot is the four, six, eight, which is breathing in for four, holding for six, and out for eight counts. Let's just do that twice right now, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, breathing in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, breathe out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Big breath in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, one of the reasons that I particularly like that kind of uh, breath exercise is because you actually have to think about it a little bit. You have to pay attention. And so therefore, you have released whatever the thinking was that you were doing that caused you the stress in the first place. That Breath is, that's your first place of defense. You know, you can even use it, obviously, when you're in the car and there's something that happens, somebody jumps in your lane too quickly and it frightens you, you have an instant threat response, and then that drains away. Now is a great time to take a breath. So, catch, release, breathe. following that space of us, that intuitiveness of us, that when we are asked to drop in, we know exactly what to do. We move from somewhere into or out to or about to whatever that thing is that calls us forth into the knowingness that we are a part of something much larger, much grander, much more diverse and expressive than our unique self knowing that we indeed are a unique entity within the mix of all things in this universe, in this vast cosmos that contains absolutely everything and is boundless, it's boundless, the infinite, the I am that is ever flowing, ever moving, ever expanding, that creative force that just ripples throughout all time. We acknowledge that now as we simply settle into being. And it's in this being space, it's in this being space, this moment that we settle into the knowingness that indeed I am. The I am, I am me and you are you, yet we are all of, all a part of, all contributing to, all an aspect of the I am. How profound that is to just sit and be and live as I am. In this I amness now, we also know that as we speak, as we think, as we live, that we are creating, that we are a creative force, that we mold the clay before us, that we are shaping our experience. We're getting to write the script of our lives with each moment and each breath. How do we interpret what's happening, what's going on around us? How do we create and manifest what it is that we seek? And so it's here in this manifestation process that we just affirm, we affirm and know that there is indeed an unbound abundance, a profound prosperity available to each and every one of us that is always around and with and through us just as the oxygen and air that we breathe. Just as easy as that, as simple as taking a breath, we know that we receive and at the very same time we exhale and give. This reciprocal nature, this cyclical action of life, of unfoldment, of creation, this wave that we ride on, that we are prosperous with whatever it is that we're seeking right now, whether that be uh, an abundance of money, an abundance of love, 
of joy, an abundance of gratitude, the prosperity consciousness that there is no lack, but yet there is a mountain full, an abundance of an ever expressing flow of goodness flowing to, in, and through who and what and where we are. We allow this to be so. We recognize in this time, in this space, in this moment that there is nothing really more than gratitude and love. We give great thanks for the knowingness, great thanks for this life, this consciousness, our bodies, this availability to be alive, awake, and conscious participants in the world that we live in. How good it is to be here and now. We let this be so and declare together we declare it as such by simply saying, and so it is. <laughs>